Hey everybody, we're live here. It's Bold Live. Uh, we're counting down uh, 50 seconds till we go live. Hi, I'm Casey Kasperzik, supervising producer for the Bold and the Beautiful. And today we've got we've got one of the nicest guys. I say that every time, but he is the nicest guy. Lawrence St. Victor uh, plays Carter, and he's also a very talented writer. And so we're going to talk to him about that. Which does he prefer more, acting or writing? I'd like to know. And it's in the best and worst from Soap Opera Digest is here. And um, I'd say Lawrence did pretty well with the, with that. So we're going to talk about all of that. And uh, what are you doing for the holidays? Christmas is coming. Let's get ready to uh, let's get ready to celebrate. So uh, get a cup of coffee or your nice beverage and join Bold Live in three, two, one. Boom. Well, welcome to Bold Live. How is everybody? Everybody's coming in. Hey, everybody. Good to see you all there. Let me make sure I've got it on the monitor over here so I can see it over here. Oh, let me turn that down. Um, yeah. Oh, also, I got a haircut. How do I look? Good. My hair was getting really long. It was getting it was getting long. So I got a haircut because, I, you know, I got to look good for the holiday parties. Um, and uh, last week when I ended, I said I was off to New York. So I really I did a 24 hour trip to New York to see Allie Mills in her uh, off Broadway play mornings at seven. And, um, that was an amazing trip. It was so great to see Allie. She says hello to all of you. And I hope Pam is back on the show soon. So, uh, cause we love Pam, but she was having a great time in New York. And, um, uh, I'm so glad I was able to go see it. I literally there was for there for like 24 hours. I, I took a red eye out after the show. Um, got to New York, saw Allie. Then I went and saw a matinee of Mrs. Doubtfire which just opened on Broadway and um, really fun show, really fun, uh, good time. Cause that's what theater is all about, right? Having a good time and Broadway was back. And then I met Jennifer Garris, Donna, she was there in New York. We had dinner and then we went and saw Allie Mills. And then uh, I slept literally for um, like four hours in Allie's place on an air mattress, which is very comfortable. It's a very comfortable. And then I was back on a plane back uh, to LA. Then I went to the Rams game because, uh, you know, go Rams. So anyway, that was my uh, weekend last week. Uh, and uh, it's been a busy week here at the Bold and the Beautiful. Um, did you all see today's air show? Taylor's back. We're going to talk about that a little bit at the end of uh, the episode, uh, or this Bold Live. But right now, um, I want directly from the set. All right. Uh, Lawrence St. Victor uh, literally just finished taping his scenes. And he was wearing a really nice... Um, uh, workout outfit because I don't know if you know this, but the character of Carter um, works out a lot. I, I don't know. You wouldn't really know that from looking at him, but I guess he works out quite a bit. So, you know, he, he's getting there. Eventually, eventually we'll see some results. But right now, but anyway, he was wearing a really nice jogging, like sweatsuit thing. It was look really nice. And uh, we, we were, we were kind of talking about maybe, you know, do the cast get to take the wardrobe home? No. Never. No, that is property of the show. They don't get to take it home. But if they was going to take something home, might take that home. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lawrence St. Victor. Hey, Lawrence. Hey, man, what's up? How's it going? I'm on my third cup of coffee. So. Oh, man, I need to catch up with you. <laughs> my mom says that I talk too much. Oh, okay. Maybe. Hi, mom, if you're watching. Once I, I once you, my, mom. Mom said, my mom said, do you ever watch The Bold Live? I'm like, um, not, I mean, kind of, but not really, because I'm like, I'm here. here. And then, and then she goes, "Oh, okay." I go, "Why, mom?" And she goes, "Oh, because you you talk, um, <laughs> you talk a lot." I'm like, "Well, I'm trying to be entertaining, so I don't know." I say, "Sorry, mom, if I don't talk, it wouldn't be good." But I don't know if the audience knows this, but Lawrence was just telling me this. He doesn't miss an episode of Bold Live. I watch all the Bold Lives, man. I really enjoy them. I love the fan interaction. And I just love getting to see my co-stars talk about their favorite storylines or or what's going on in their lives, you know? I, I watch every episode, Casey. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. We will send you out a Bold Live gift pack. No, I don't yes. have I, I wish I had a gift pack. I don't uh, have any Bold Live merch, but if I did, I would. But I want but if you guys want to talk to Lawrence, this is the number. You see that number there? Do, do, my do, personal do. phone number. Yeah, right that's Lawrence. <laughs> oh boy. Wait, uh oh, that was wrong to know. This is the number to call. So later in the show, I want you to call 
I want everybody to call. Everybody in, in, in the world, call that number and talk to Lawrence. And um, But when you do call, a couple of rules. I want to know your name and where you're calling from. Make sure your computer's down, too, because uh, I don't like to hear myself talk again. Uh, where, what's your name, where you're calling from, and get to your question. That way we can get to as many of you as possible. Um, and uh, uh, that's the rule. So we're going to open that up a little bit later. But, yeah. I wanted to talk about, I mentioned that in the opening, that the Soap Opera Digest Best and Worst Awards came out. Ooh. Yes. And uh, <laughs> I, I think Bold and Beautiful did pretty well, thanks to you, Lawrence. Uh. So the first award we got was, you see that there? Most Shocking <laughs> Twist. Boom. Yeah, nobody saw that coming. No, I didn't see that coming either. I don't think any of us saw <laughs> not at first, not when it was first pitched to us. Yeah, I, re I remember we talked a little bit about it the, the first time you were on. Um, yeah, what was, what, I mean. I loved it because when Brad told me about it, I had no idea what it would, how it would look, what it would do. And I loved the, the question mark because I'm like, if we don't know and the fans don't know, then we get to all discover it together at the same time. And yeah. watch it take shape for the first time you know so i loved it and i know it was a little like it was shocking and a little controversial yeah to some people <laughs> yeah. which yeah. which you know it's a soap opera right it's like we're gonna push the buttons and, yeah and it's the whole the whole, the whole storyline that's what i love so much about it from start to to where it i guess sort of concluded was it was gray, you know, there, there was no one to root for, no one to really hate. You're just watching human beings make these connections, whether it was right or wrong, but you can't deny that that connection was made. And right. I, I love that kind of storytelling. And um, I'm looking, Ani uh, made a comment, the quarter sex scene was the best of the entire decade. Oh, wow. I mean, that's Cindy Pop. That's our, that's our wonderful director. She's the one that like really, gave us our choreography, mm -hmm. had us kind of go all over. There's an uncut version, Casey, that did yeah. not make it to air. There was and a too hot for daytime version, yes. Uh, but but tell the audience that. a little bit about what goes into a love scene because it's not very glamorous. You know, no, to shoot, to shoot. It's very it's very like technical. It is. It's so technical because not only are you you kissing, you have to hit a certain spot physically for the cameras, but then you have to make sure that your head isn't in her light, putting a shadow on her face and vice versa. And then, you know, if you're wearing body makeup, which we kind of do just so everything's all nice and smooth, but then you don't yeah. want to get... Body makeup is the secret. If you're ever wondering, like, they all look so perfectly tanned and, well, and, and, and just, like, the, you see, like, the features of the muscles... Okay, well, they do, they already do that, but the makeup enhances it even more, just evens yeah. everything out. Just keeps everything but smooth, but then yeah. body makeup can transfer. I'm to wearing clothes. body makeup right now. You can't see it, but <laughs> more for me. But anyway, yes. So you, but yeah, you're, so you're, caked, you're caked in the makeup, right? It's and like, you don't want to transfer it to your, your partner yeah. or old clothes. So it's, it's, it's very technical. But um, when we have our directors, they make it so easy, though. You know, it moves fast, but they make it very easy. It just occurred to me, was that like the first full on love scene with a, that, that Carter had? Like you had romantic scenes with Maya. But I never. But not that, like that. No, no, no. This is my first love scene. Yeah. 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 And I, I think I think that storyline helped kind of make up for lost time. Like, I think it did in one shot, man. <laughs> Well, no, we saw like multiple episodes too. Oh yeah, they kept they kept doing it. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. It made up a Carter's dry spell. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, um, and then the other award that Soap Opera Digest is most rejuvenate. Let me see that most rejuvenated character, which I feel like, yeah, hello, <laughs> of course, but but um. But I think you've been like the most consistent character, but it was great to like have this go in deeper into Carter, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think Carter is a very good guy that got his heart broken 
and now his mindset's very complicated. I think he's still good, but we're getting to see like what happens when that good guy gets pushed a little too far and now starts making choices that aren't the best. And I, I, it's more interesting. But um, but I think it's so interesting because you had him consistent before. So you're watching somebody break bad, you know? Yeah. Well, I think I, I love the, the, the part that I love the most which used history, character history in the storyline was when Eric wanted to have a vow renewal ceremony with, with Quinn. And, well, who are you going to call? Our, 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 our friendly uh, minister, uh, Carter. And uh, awkward. I don't think I'm going to be invited to do <laughs> weddings anytime soon. Yeah. I might have lost that spot for a Yeah, you, 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 didn't, you didn't do Steffi and uh, Finn's I wedding. Don't think they would, I wasn't invited to their wedding. No, no. So it's good thing. It's good thing. It's good thing you have like four other professions to fall back on. Yeah, lawyer, CEO. Oh, I, I can't, Carter was an actor at one yeah, point. Yeah, you were. You were in the web series uh, Roommate. You know. Yes. But the acting career, you know, it's very hard in this business. It's, very hard in this business. I don't think Carter. I don't think he made it. <laughs> Didn't make it, but uh, but you, the lawyer thing is doing really well. I think at he's Forrester. doing pretty good at Forrest, yeah. as long as he stops sleeping. Minister. With his wife. Yeah, you know, but. Um, it is love is love. Love is love, man. And I will say this for, for all the, the people that, um, were really mad at Carter. You're right. You should have been mad at Carter, but Carter never made a move on Quinn when her and Eric were good. Mm. It was when he was ignoring her or he said, I wanted a divorce. But when they were like trying to connect, Carter was not anywhere near it. So he was bad. But he still was like, I'm not crossing some lines. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, so now so now that, you know, Carter is like uh, needs to find somebody new to 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 fill his time in his heart. And uh, I know, you know, we a lot of people are, are hinting at uh, Carter and Katie. I know we've kind yeah. of teased that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're two people who are, you know, two lonely souls, two people who have a lot to offer, who have a lot to give, and they get each other. And, I, oh, Casey, I love those scenes so much because Katie came to tell Carter off, and in right. their fight, they were like, I get you. Yeah. So that was yeah. so much fun to play. I, I love yeah. those scenes so much. Um We'll see. <laughs> I mean, no, you guys, it was great chemistry. Heather's amazing. Um, you know, I would love, I would love to see those scenes and, um, just, and also I would love to, you know, Quinn find out that Katie's now with Carter and, you Ooh, know, man. Quinn, uh, would be very, I mean, Quinn loves Eric, right? Yeah. But a part of her loves Carter. I mean, I was, I was thinking about this today and, and maybe, uh, our fans can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Has Quinn ever cried, like dropped tears over the loss of a love on this show? Hmm. Before her breakup with Carter. It's okay. I think honestly, I think it was she was very upset when um Liam regained his memory. Cause she had a real oh, connection with uh, okay. Liam when he lost his memory and was Adam. And it was Adam oh. and Eve. Like uh that was all uh, lies, though, Casey. That yeah, that was all lies. lies. That was all. That wasn't. That was. But that was. That was. That doesn't um, count. That was all lies. No, but I mean, uh, you're. But, no, but, <laughs> but no. Uh, I think it's it's a real. It was it was just a really interesting storyline to play out from all angles. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I think it's really fun for the audience to see just office scenes with you and Quinn where it's still smoldering, like it's still there, you know, yeah. but you're trying to su suppress it. So you don't, you don't, it takes a long time, I believe, for people to like fully fall out of love with someone they're in love with yeah, or lust with or whatever you want to call it. It's not just a switch that goes off. So I, I think Carter and Quinn have respectfully so far have said, we're calling it quits. But it's still, it's still in there. It's still in there. Different circumstances. If Eric never came back, yeah, would be together right now. 
So it's not like they said, oh, we don't fit. We don't work. We don't like each other. No, Eric kind of came back, you know. That's true. Okay, well, I want to I want to move to I want to get the phone lines opened here so people can call in. Um, but first, I've got two video questions. So here's our first video question. Hey, I'm Jacardius Naylor, and I'm from Cleveland, Mississippi, and I'm 21 years old. <laughs> so I have a question for Lawrence St. Victor, who plays Carter, of course. So what did you learn from being on Guiding Light? Oh, yes. Before oh, wow. you were on uh, The Bold and the Beautiful, you were on Guiding Light. What, what was, was that like? That was my first professional job right out of college, man. So I learned wow. how to be a professional actor. What is it like to, to do it as a job and not just in school or for fun? So I learned everything when, you know, showing up on time, what blocking is, what rehearsal looks like, uh, what a script looks like when it's like presented to you. Like all the things we just know now, I mm -hmm. learned for the first time on that show. And then working with amazing actors, just not just learning the craft, but learning how to do it at this speed, <laughs> you yeah. know, on this kind of show. So I learned pretty much, that was my soap opera boot camp, Guiding Light. How, and how long were you on Guiding Light? I was on three years, up, up until this cancellation. Up okay, until, like, all right. Well, I know. I mean, just a side note, like, I missed the CBS lineup with, with Young and the Restless, Bold and Beautiful, of course, but then As the World Turns and Guiding Light. Like, Oh, man. I grew up with like all four of those shows. Like I was a CBS person, so yeah, it's uh, it was great. You kind of started your you started your morning and you worked your whole way through into like the afternoon. It was a it was a wonderful lineup. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. it was a it was, it was you were part of television history, you know, because Guiding Light yeah. was a long, very, very long running uh, soap opera. But, Seventy-two years, including radio, all together. That's crazy. Man. That's crazy. Um. <laughs> our, well, I got one more video question from Candice. Candice. This is me, Candice. Here's my question for you. If you could tell Carter any kind of advice regarding relationships, what would it be and why? So proud of you and love you. Bye. Love Candice. Uh, I love Candice is like my, my little sister. And I love she had a Superman emblem behind her. She knows I have a thing. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a piece of advice I would give Carter when it comes to his love life is stop trying to be a superhero. You know, I think I think there's something about him that really sees people who either feel unloved or feel let down or broken. And he feels like he can show them how much they deserve to be loved. Mm -hmm. And it's a, an amazing quality he has, but it also makes him not see red flags. Like, I can fix this. I can work on this. I can be here for you. And it's like, dude, eventually she's not giving you enough. And if you go back and watch, like, Carter and Maya, it's like Maya never was fully into Carter the way she was into Rick, even when they were right. engaged. But Carter couldn't see it because he was so focused on, you know, I'm going to show you what it's like to be loved. So I'll be like, Carter, you got to slow down. And it's okay if you let someone rescue you every now and then. Yeah. That's what I would tell him. That is very good advice. All right. Well, I don't listen to me, but you know, you know, you no, it's it's uh there's a lot to learn from Carter. I mean, you um you uh are kind of I mean, I don't say moral compass, but you're you're good to for other for other characters to sort of process how they're feeling with. And you you know. Yeah. yeah. But and I guess he was until <laughs> recently. <laughs> Well, Let's see how we but that, that was that was the most shocking twist. So, you know, boom, boom, boom. We love the twist. We love the twist. <laughs> All right. Well, the phone lines are burning up. Let's take a caller. Mel say Carter's a sim. Captain save -a Hey, welcome wow. to Bold Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, you know, boom, boom. We love the twist. We love the twist. All right. Hello. Let's take a caller. Oh, see. Then Hello. Hi. My name is Gina and I'm from Frankfurt, New York, and I have a question for both of you. Uh, my first question is for um Casey. 
I just want to know if Eric Forster is um, is okay because we haven't seen him on the air. Yes. Um, he's good. Are you, are you saying Eric Forster or John McCook? Can you hear me? Gina. Gene, Gina. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hang on. All right, Gina from Frankfurt. Can you hear me? Can yes. Hear me? Yeah. Gina. Um. Go ahead. My other question is uh, for um, Carter. Um, I think I have a suggestion for you that mm -hmm. maybe there could be another person coming on that we don't know of that you may meet somewhere in a restaurant or maybe come to work for Forrester and you may possibly fall in love with her and forget about all the other ones there on Bold and Beautiful. But oh. I think you're great. I, I think you're such a wonderful person. You seem like uh, someone <clears throat> like that's your true self. Like if I were to meet you, you'd seem like a nice person that would take somebody out to dinner and do all those nice Aww. things. But anyways, Aww. happy holidays. And um, I'm in the car right now, so that's probably my problem. I, um, I couldn't hear you because last week I missed um, Stephanie. So I went out to dinner and I'm like, oh, my God, bold life. I can't miss it again tonight. So <laughs> Yeah, Gina, you cannot go out to you dinner on Fridays. Do not go out no to dinner. dinner on Fridays. <laughs> All right, Gina, thank you for calling. Thank you, Gina. Thank you. All right. Well, yeah, I mean, you never know. Uh, the, the thing is, though, I would tell Gina is LA's LA is a very, very small city. There's hardly anybody that small. lives here. Um, live here. And they all go to one restaurant. Um, and they all work at Forrester. They all work at Forrester. They go to one <laughs> restaurant. And um, so it's very hard to run into somebody. Um, it's incredibly difficult, Casey. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway. Uh, if you live in LA, you know it's small. It's tiny. Hi, welcome to Bold Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good evening, Mr. Casey and Mr. Lawrence. How you doing? This is Jared calling from Gulfport, Mississippi. How y'all doing tonight? Hey, man. What's up? How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Uh, I wanted to call you my my Gemini brother because you and I have the same birthday as, as many as many don't know. Wow, June fourteenth. Yes, sir. Yes, All sir. All right, man. Flag day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Doesn't somebody else have a birthday that's, June that's, 14th? That's, that's, Lawrence, that's, that's Lawrence St. Victor Day and Jerry Ford Jr. Day. <laughs> Let's go, man. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Jim and I all the way. All the way. <laughs> well, Jerry, do you have a yes, question? Uh, as a matter of fact, I do, uh, Mr. Casey. Um, uh, first off, how you doing tonight, sir? I'm excited because we have one more week of production, and then it's our holiday That's break. Awesome. So, right, Lawrence? Aren't you excited? It's a little red. Get to eat all the carbs I want. I, <laughs> I hate you. It's a holiday season. <laughs> you don't eat carbs. But, um, oh, I will. Oh. I will. <laughs> Look, look, I'll join you. <laughs> Listen. Also, shout out to everybody in the chat. Uh, hope everybody is doing well, as I am. Well, I, I like well, your I energy, I Jared. So you're you're a big, bold, and beautiful fan. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Mr. Casey, we, I mean, we talked a few weeks ago because I was on there with uh, uh, Tanner. Uh, mm. uh, oh, right. About a, a month ago in, uh, in November. I'm glad I came on here to talk to y'all for just a minute, but I do have a question for uh, for Lawrence. Yes, sir. I mean, how many? I mean, because I know your character Carter had a lot on his plate this year on Bold and Beautiful. I know he had a lot on his plate, you know, with all the stuff going on. I, I get it, but uh, <laughs> yeah. but it was but it was but it was fun playing that role, and you had like a lot on your plate, you know, with the. The, the, the love scenes with you know with Raina Sofa as Quinn and recently with Diamond White as uh, as Paris. I mm -hmm. mean, I mean it's been it's been a lot for you, bro. It's been a whole lot for you, man. Yeah, it's been fun though, man. I got to tell you, it's fun to like 
take your expectations of who you, who you think Carter is and then like kind of flip it on you a bit and just watching him just continue to dig himself into to more of a mess has been a lot of fun. Uh, I say keep it coming. Keep it coming, Casey. Yeah. Keep it coming. We'll keep it. Well, Jared, thank yeah. you so much for calling. Oh, you're more than welcome. Once again, shout out to everybody in the chat. And I did watch the uh, the recent uh, episode of uh, a Chris, Miss Krista Allen playing as a new Taylor. I mean, she did a she did an amazing job. She did an awesome job. Oh I'm, yeah, I'm giving her my best. To well, of her work over well, there. Jared, make sure you tune in next week. We'll have Krista here. I'll be sure to do that. Okay. Have a great weekend. All right, y'all be blessed. You too, care. man. Bye bye. I just have to keep moving because I've got 14 people on hold. So I'm, I'm looking through the chat. I know, and well, yeah. Like. If hi, welcome to Bold Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Suzanne, and I'm calling from St. Louis, Missouri. Hey, Suzanne, say hi to Lawrence. Hey, Lawrence, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. Oh, good, good, good. Weather's kind of fine here this week. The um. I have a comment and I have a question. And I do believe that Carter is the most transformed character because I believe in the past Carter was running a bit of a marital scam. And you kind of mentioned that he would marry him and officiate the wedding. And then three months later, he's like, oh, it's not working out. Let me help you with your divorce or annulment oh. or whatever it is that we're going to get. So I was like, it's a one stop like shop. A revolving yeah. Door. yeah. Um, I do have a question. But did he ever fill um, those documents out correctly? I, you know, that was the. Hey, wait, wait, wait. So, those, hey, those details. Don't worry about those details. And sometimes yeah. it was hit or miss, depending on what was needed for the storyline. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so I do have a question, and it's not about the acting or the Carter part, but can you tell us a little about the writing that you do and kind of. Like, what is it that you do? Do you write the dialogue? Do you come up with stories? How, how, what is your role in that? And how does that work for you? Because I'm kind of interested in the back, behind the scenes stuff too. Oh, that's such a great question. Um, Brad, our, our fearless leader, he does all the heavy lifting. You know, he really crafts the stories and comes up with what's going to happen. And as the writers, we're pretty much, we, uh, outlines get sent out, we get the outlines and then we get a script uh, given to us. And then we we write that script to the outline. The outline is pretty much where the story is going. So we don't we don't come up with the stories that are happening, but we get to to create the scenes and, and the dialogue and and you know how to get to the story depending on, on what's in your script. So yeah, we're I, I guess script writers would be it would would be a, a term. Am I explaining that right, Casey? Well, yeah, absolutely. No, no. I, I was I was just trying to find one of your scripts because I was going to uh, show the process, but uh, I didn't prepare that. But no, basically, Lawrence is right. Like uh, Brad, Brad Bell and uh, Michael Minnis will Michael come up Minnis. with um, an outline for the episode and they send that to all our di dialogue writers. And then it's up to the dialogue writers to really make the show come alive, like, yeah. you know, and, and help give the characters a voice. So, um I, 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 there's a roadmap, but it's really up to the dialogue writer. So, and like Lawrence, I mean, it must be really kind of like a cool, I mean, I know you've been writing like almost your entire life. <laughs> it's a real creative outlet. And I'm sure you really like, it's probably, you, you, you know, these characters, but now you, you get to actually like make, put words in their mouths. Dude, I get to like, so experience, cool. yeah, I get to experience <laughs> them in different ways and, the most fun part right now I'm having about the writing process is the research that I get to do. So like I'm sitting here on this wonderful Bold and the Beautiful YouTube channel and I'm like, man, I, I want to see when Brooke and Ridge met for the first time. Hmm. So I'm watching that scene by the pool and he mistakes her for Caroline and she turns around and instantly it's like, oh man, y'all don't even understand the road you're going to go down. So like as a writer to just be able to look at history and rewatch those moments. It's just so much fun now that I get to take some of that nuance and, and add it if I can. Um, it's so much fun, Casey. I can't even describe how much fun it is to, to cause you know, as Carter, I'm in one part of the world, but when you write, you get to be like, I'm in every storyline. Well, you're right. And then what's fun is a, what's fun as a producer is then to take like your script 
and really like find, oh, well, this is really cool. We could have this song here or the directors, oh, how they're going to shoot it. Like, it must be really cool to see then your vision come to life on screen. It's just, yeah, it's just handed over. It's like, it's, yeah. it's, it's not this precious thing. It's like a relay race. You know, I ran my leg and I hand you the baton and then it's yours and you take it. And by the time you guys see what's on television, it's such a collaborative effort. You know, mm -hmm. so many departments and people you wouldn't expect all influence everything you see. Um, so I love it, man. I was like, I was just handed this by Rachel here at the office. This is, <laughs> this is an upcoming episode. Oh, man. I, spoiler alert with characters. Okay, that's all you can see. That's all you did. You didn't give anything away. I don't think no, you. no. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. It, it sounds like you're living the dream, Lawrence, because I know I would love to be putting some words in some of those characters' mouths. So. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <I'm> man. <jealous. laughs> so you all have a good evening and a happy holiday, and I can't wait to see what's coming what, up. For Suzanne, I, Suzanne, I have a question for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I always wanted to come to St. Louis to see the Ark. Is it worth it? Oh, uh, yeah. It's uh, the, the arch with like, arch. I'm sorry, arch. arch. I know, you know the arch. Yeah. yeah. Well, people call it that all the time, and yes. you know you can go up inside it, and it's yes. like 700 feet off the ground, and so you get a pretty good view. Um, you can see that um, stadium where the Rams used to play before they left and broke my heart. <laughs> oh wait, are you a Rams fan? <laughs> oh, I was until they left St. Louis, and see, I'm, I'm, you got him. I grew up with the Rams uh, in Anaheim when they were in Anaheim, and then yeah. it broke my heart when they moved to St. Louis. So, I don't, I don't accept the St. Louis years. Oh wow! <laughs> so, so maybe we could come together. <laughs> yes, yes. I love the Dodgers. Maybe we can get together over that. <laughs> okay. I don't. I'm an Angels fan. Sorry. Oh, you guys are just. Oh, strange. No, but anyway, yeah. wait. How many times have you been in the? Um, arch it's been a long time but probably four or five you know it's like a field trip okay see it's like one of those things like summer in, day camp like lawrence like people, live there. people probably think we go to the hollywood sign all the time you know like i i see it from the but i it's not something i hike no 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 yeah. anyway all right well cool well i really appreciated you calling and thank you for watching the show thanks you guys have a good evening okay thank you Bye -bye. so much I, I have a weird thing where, I, yeah, let's read some of these comments that are going by. We're having these comments. Uh, LSV, if you had to, Annie J, LSV, if you had to write your version of Carter's ideal woman, new character or existing character, what would you write? Wow, that's an interesting question. If I had to choose, I think she would be single first right single no yep. ties to any any anybody um i would like i would like i i don't really care so much for what, what she does for a living but someone who is kind of a firecracker someone who's a little you know hot where carter could be cool because i think the opposites work um so it's just a firecracker someone who just kind of takes life and grabs it and just is, is free-spirited and I think that would be interesting seeing Carter, who's a little bit more, you know, he's COO. He's a little bit more like this. I think that would be like ideal for him. But single, Casey. She has to be single. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, it's a small town. It's a small, it's a very small town. town. Very small town. Um, I was going to say, let's see, what else? Um, yeah, yeah. I know. What happened to the fashion show? I know Norma. It was called the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, but it was very, it's very hard to do a, a fashion show, but we're working on something. So stick with us. We will hopefully bring at least more fashion back. That would be mm. my, that'd be my Christmas wish for 2022. Oh, and you're a Gemini. I'm a Capricorn. Nobody asks, but I'm a Capricorn. <laughs> my birthday's January 4th. Um, your ideal woman sounds like Steffi or Sally. Oh, Sally would have been interesting. That's good. Uh, yeah, but they have to be single. <laughs> that's the, that's my oh, Kenneth wants people. to know, do you keep in touch with anyone from Guiding Light? Yeah, actually, um, I was just talking to, and I got to call him back, actually, Frank Dacopoulos, who played Frank on Guiding Light. And um, 
as you guys know, Carla Mosley is, you know, a very, very, very close friend of mine. And um, yeah, we're always a text away from each other. You know, uh, Ivana, who played my sister, uh, Tom Pelfrey, who just did amazing on um, Ozark. He killed on an Ozark. I sent him a yeah. message. Yeah, right you know, I, I, my, I, I, I was like, this guy looks familiar. And then I, then I looked at him and I was like, that's Tom Pelfrey? Wow. Like, he was so good on Ozark. I had to text him. I'm like, dude, why are you making me cry watching this show? Oh, my God. <laughs> I love Ozark. That was so good. Oh, man. So, yeah, we're, we're all, it's a family. And it's just like this, you know. It's like no matter what, you're part of Bulls and the Beautiful for Life, whether you're still on the show or not. It's like you just are. So to answer your question, yes. <laughs> um, all right. Well. I've got a lot of callers, so I, I gotta gotta. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Who else is there? Hi, welcome to Bold Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Melissa from Hopesville, New York. Hey, Melissa, say New hi York. to Lawrence. Hi, hi, Lawrence. How you doing? Hi. How are you? I'm good. How you doing? I'm good. Just taking a break from game. My daughter's uh, birthday party right here this oh. weekend. December yeah, birthday. My wife's birthday. She's December all excited. Birthday. <laughs> yeah, it, she she would love to do an outdoor one, but it's too cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, it, it finally it finally started getting cold in New York, huh? Like it finally dropped. Yeah, t today was actually pretty warm. I was I was in shock. It did not feel like December. <laughs> New York. I mean, I'm, I'm from New York, so it's like that. It's like you're just waiting for winter to hit consistently. Sometimes. Yeah, and that's how people get sick, which is sad. True, true story. But, uh, well, my question is, uh, what do you think will happen with uh, Katie and Carter? I really like them together. I think they, they really complement each other. I hope they end up together. I think um, I think it's it, there's a big question mark there. I think for, for when, when Bill kind of set up that impromptu FaceTime call with Will, I think it hit Carter like, am I doing it again? Am I going after someone? who has a deep like soul connection, soul tie to somebody else. And that if, if I did get with Katie, if she found her in her heart to forgive Bill, would Carter win in that fight? I think Carter's like really thinking about, he's thinking about Zoe and Quinn and Maya. And he's like, as much as I would love to entertain this, I, I don't know what to do. So I think there's a big question mark there for him when it comes to Katie right now, but, but who knows? Yep. I think we are two people that would be great together. That would be amazing friends as well. So who knows? Yeah, well, we'll you guys see. are already amazing friends. Yeah, yeah. So I want Katie only... and Carter to get together and take over Forster. Boom, Yeah, man. that would be awesome. You yes. Know, Katie, that would be so cool. You know, you both are great business people, and it'd be boom. Like, you could just take mix it, it up. Over. Then take over Spencer Publications. Yeah. Just have all of Los Angeles. Well, <laughs> No, I think Brooke and Bill should run such a publications. That those that they are a super couple there, but Oh, you want you're Carter, you're Brooke really and you're like Brooke and Bill. You're a Brooke and Bill <laughs> fan, are you? Yes, I am. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> uh, so uh, hey, I, right. I, I thought they really were, were great together. I mean I, I saw more more action with Brooke than with when she was with Bill than with mm -hmm. Bridge. All she does is argue. And I, <laughs> well, I, I feel bad right for her now. right now. Yeah, tough times. But that's marriage. That's well, marriage. Working through yeah, stuff. All right. Yeah, well, Melissa, cool. that's now it's almost over. Thank, thank you. you so much, Melissa. I got to move on to the next call. You have a great weekend. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Melissa. Bye. Bye, -bye. Uh, Someone um, in the chat asked, "I have to answer this." Yes. Can Carter, be afraid of Bill. Hell no. Carter would not be afraid of Bill at all. Carter, as sweet as he is, don't forget, he is a corporate lawyer. He is a shark when he needs to be. Yeah. And Carter's not afraid of anybody. Mm -hmm. Just have that up there. Miss Caller. <laughs> well, all right. Hello. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Casey. Rebecca. Rebecca? Rebecca who? San Clemente. I don't know. I don't know. Re I'm just joking with you, Rebecca. Of course. Lawrence knows Hi, Rebecca. Rebecca. Watches yes. every episode. Hi, Lawrence. I watch all of that. Hi. How are you? Okay. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So are you enjoying uh, Bold Live tonight? 
Yep, definitely. You know, he's one of my favorites, so uh, thank I'm you. digging it. Who's not your favorite? You're welcome. Who's not your favorite? <laughs> it's okay. I won't tell Nobody. anyone. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what to ask you. Let's see. Um, besides what? acting and writing, what other talents do you have? That's a good question. <laughs> well, he's an amazing <laughs> husband and father. I can tell you that. Oh, uh, thank you, Casey. I guess that's a talent. Yeah, your um, kid's cute. I've seen pictures of him. Uh, thank you. I would say I'm not a dancer, but I, ha I do have some rhythm, if you want to call that talent. Um, yeah. Cool. So I play and some sport. One more, uh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. Do you cook? Do you do no, cooking? No, I'm just too excited. I'm so, always so excited to talk to you then. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I, I, that's all my talents. I, 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 I listed them all. <laughs> Do you know what talent okay. I, wait, or, uh, you know, I, when Tanner was on, I learned he plays the piano. See, hmm. I can't do anything that interesting. I'm like, I, I was mean, like, are you kidding me? Is it, like, like, you guys have all these hidden talents. Not me. <laughs> Can you sing? Um. No. <laughs> this is all you get. Uh, my is... other question is, um, what episodes have you written? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't. Oh, yeah. Well, what do you remember a particular like moment? Yeah, and I, I was really happy. I was. I really love this this moment because um, I kind of got to, to 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 add my two cents into it. And it was when um, Deacon was telling pretty much Hope like he's changed, and then mm -hmm. she's like, "Why?" And then I, then I, in my mind, I'm thinking, why has he changed? And I was like, because in one of the letters she wrote him, she told him about the baby she thought she lost and he wasn't there to be there for her. Mm. That's the mm -hmm. thing. As a parent, your daughter mm. went to the worst thing in her life and you weren't there. I'm like, mm -hmm. that's it. So I, I, I got to write um, Deacon a really cool speech where Sean just killed it. He got to go in and just tell her this is the moment mm. that made me say no mm -hmm. more. So that that kind of mm. sticks in my mind right now. Cool. I don't think he's changed. He never will. Oh. I don't think. <laughs> I think he wants to change. He can. <laughs> he wants to. Whether he can, well, we'll see. Well, Rebecca, <laughs> thank you for keeping your streak alive. And yes, uh, thank you. We'll talk to you next week. Okay, we'll right, do. Bye bye. 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 All right. Rebecca from San Clemente. Yeah. If I ever get stranded in San Clemente, I'm just going to say, Rebecca, <laughs> help me. Anyway, hi, welcome to Vault Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Um, hi, this is Ariel from Richmond, Virginia. Hey, Ariel. How are you? I'm good. Um, I actually called last time um, for uh, Steffi, actually. Yes. Uh. Um, I love you on the show. Thank You're a great you. actor. Thank you very much. And and I saw that speech, and it was actually a really good speech that Deacon did. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you it was, did a good job. It was a lot job. of fun to write that. It was a lot of fun to step in Deacon's shoes. Um, and I guess my question for you would be, um, when you were working with Texas Battle, I think I'm saying his name right. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you enjoy working with him? I used to like seeing you guys like friendship on the show a lot. I used to like you guys yeah. like just have good conversation. Texas was like a brother, man. I mean, when I first came on the show, and I think it's for any actor, it's like being the new kid in school, like you watching everyone have a shorthand and they all know each other. And the second I stepped on set, Texas was like, big bro. And it was just love from there. And we would try to find things in our scenes to kind of do brotherly things. And he really just, kind of like wrapped his arms around me and embraced me and he made my time, made my introduction here just real seamless and fun. I love Texas. I still, we still chat from time to time. Love Texas. Oh, that's so cool. And I definitely yeah. could tell, like <laughs> it showed in the acting that you guys had to like really get along with each other. Yeah, I, I, I'd say if you want to call it acting, cause really when we were together, it was just like us. 
<laughs> just us being, you know, uh, he, he's really, natural. and he's easy to, to get along with in that way. He's so playful and loving. So he, he made, he made the job very easy. It would be great to see you guys again. So if he ever decides to come back, that would be awesome. I mean, Carter you never, can use a brother to tell him stop with this foolishness, Casey. Yeah. You never know. You never, <laughs> you know. never know. Well, Ariel, thank you so much for calling. Thank you. Have a good holiday. Likewise. You too. See you next time. Bye-bye. All right. Let's get a few more phone calls in. <laughs> Hi. Welcome to Bold Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Um, I'm Lorraine. I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. Oh, what was your name? I missed it. Lorraine. Lorraine. Hi, say hi to Lawrence. Hi, Lawrence. How you doing? I am good. How about you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm sorry. I'm very nervous um, and excited. Oh, that's okay. Don't I'm be. nervous too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to Lawrence. It's very nervous. You know. I can imagine so. Um, I just want. Um. I wanted to say that um, I have been watching um, Guiding Light lately, the old episode, like when you first started. So it's been oh, yeah. intriguing watching watching the progression from Guiding Light to, to now you on Bold. Yeah. What a um, progression. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you were a good actor then, but you have just been improving over time. So you've oh, gotten man. good yeah. to great. Thank you. I mean, you know, then I was just trying to figure out how to just say my lines where I needed to say them and get out the way. You know, I mean, it's new cadet school for sure back then. I got you. Well, you did a good job. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you had a cool character name, Remy. I like, I love that name. Remy, Remy. Boudreaux. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's That sounds like a soap um, opera name. That's, that's a cool name. Yeah. <laughs> So um, my question is, um, well, actually, you already answered that question. So I can answer that one. Um, I was going to say about um, wedlock. Mm -hmm. um, I love that show. I was wondering um, if y'all would ever come out with another season because I, I just I enjoyed watching that so much. Oh, man. Thank you so much. I can't tell you how much fun we had just making it. Um, we would love to. We're, we're, we're actually trying to work on it to, to expand it right now and um, hopefully like, mm -hmm. you know, pitch in and get it produced as a TV show. So we've been working over the last so over a year, just just fleshing that out and going through the channels to make it work. So that's kind of what we want to do. But bringing it back on, on a streamer or, or even YouTube is definitely in the question, too. But we've been working for this. So we're, we're working on Wedlock currently to answer your question. Oh, very cool. Oops. Yeah. Okay. So for, just for our yeah, audience I, to know, that is a uh, web series that uh, Lawrence and Carla Mosley created and produced and starred in. Yeah. And, um, it was actually kind of how, you know, Brad caught the eye of you and Carla. This yeah. was pre-Bold and Beautiful. It's pre-Bold and Beautiful. Like when I, when I sat with Brad, I thought we would talk about Guiding Light and stuff. And he talked about wedlock the most. So. For those who don't know, we, we, like Casey said, we, we made that web series. Carla and I loved working with each other so much and loved our chemistry. We we're like, let's just keep working together. And then flash four years later, we kind of did our own reboot with more money and more tools. But a lot of that was because of Brad, Casey. Because mm. Brad kept talking about wedlock. And then when Roommate came, just kind of validating yeah. that we can write, we can produce. Uh, he, he does enjoy it. And when we made the new version of wedlock, we came here and sat with Brad and showed him like every episode. Oh, wow. How cool. Yeah, it was really nice. It was really sweet of him. So hopefully more will be out there in some way soon. Very okay. cool. Also, Wetlock has a special place in my heart because it came out on my 20th birthday. Oh. oh. Yeah. Wow, you said so your twins birthday? A... Or 20th. No, my 20th. Oh, your 20th. I was like, your twins. Oh, wow. Cool. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Well, Lorraine, thank you so much for calling. Thank you for, for answering my question and your time. All right. We'll see you next time. All right. Let's see. I'm going to take two more callers here. Hi. Welcome to Bold Live. Say hi to Lawrence. 
Hey, Lawrence, it's your old friend Donna G from New York City. Donna, what's up? How, how are you? I have two really important questions for you. I'm number good. one, is Carter a pro wrestling fan? And number two, who was your ultimate favorite extra on The Guiding Light? <laughs> First, is Carter a professional wrestling fan? Absolutely. That's not even a question. Specifically, WWE. And who was my favorite extra on the guiding light? That would have to be a Donna. Donna, I how just are making you? Making sure. Yeah. For those who don't know, I met Donna. She was working with the WWE, and we met like on the red carpet at the yes. uh, daytime Emmys in like 2000. I don't know, a long time ago, Lauren. <laughs> yes, yes, too long to count. And yeah. you have been so kind. I've saw took my dad to so many WrestleManias and stuff. And, <laughs> Ah, uh, Donna, ha. Huh? So good to hear your voice. So fun. I know. I saw that this was live. I said, oh, I got to go on and say hi to Lawrence. Okay. That's and so how's fun. the baby? He's big and tearing up my house. He's not a baby anymore. He is not. He is not. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, Merry Christmas to you and Shay and the little one, and good to talk to you. Oh, you too, Donna. All right. Bye, Donna. Bye. Sounds like a fun yeah. person. I oh man, she could, could do a whole show with Donna G. Absolutely. Hey, uh -oh. Hello. Oh my god. Yeah, hello. Christmas to you and Shay. I just turned my computer down. You. Okay, I'm too far away from there. Oh okay. Too far. Okay, I'll turn off the television. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Hey, say hi to Lawrence. Hello. Hi, Lawrence. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, this is Betty Jobs calling from New York City. Betty Two questions for you people. City. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the one that sent the plaques out. I'm the head leader. Oh, uh, Betty. Betty, yeah. you just reached out to me. I'm going to get a plaque? Yeah, you're going to get one. It's, it's in progress right now. Oh, that's very sweet. Yeah. Mm, nice. I will, okay, two questions. I will put it Two on questions. One for, okay, you should be getting... You should get it. Maybe... Next week or week after, I don't know. Oh, um, y'all earn, y'all earn it and deserve it. I have two oh. questions for you. Yeah. First, one, first one for Lawrence. Will you ever find true love? And, no. and Stacy. Yeah, and then Stay and Casey. Will Bill and Justin ever return together? Oh. Yes. Yeah. They're a big. Player. They will come back. Oh, of course. Okay. Very, yes. Well, uh, Betty, I got to okay, go because I'm hearing some feedback. Okay, okay, all right. Bye, all right, thanks, thank Betty. you. Thank you, Betty. Okay, Betty. Betty is a uh, super fan who sends uh, award plaques to the cast every year. Oh. I don't know if you've ever, yeah, but um, I'll make sure you get the, 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 the plaque from Betty. Um, I'm excited to get one myself. And uh, oh, That's you know, very sweet. Man. They're very nice very plaques. Sweet. Yeah. All right, this is probably going to be our last caller just because we are getting up to our... You're our hello, welcome to Bold Live. Hello, I finally got in. I can't believe it. Hello, Lawrence. Hi, Casey. How you it's doing? Christina. Christina? Good. Oh, woo-wee, I can't believe it. Got to see Carter, the sexiest <laughs> man on TV. Oh, wow. You know you're killing it. You are I'm killing sorry. it on that oh. show. Without your shirt, you're making all the women pass out. <laughs> uh, thank you. So here's the question. I want to know how much do you miss being in New York? Oh, my goodness. I miss being in New York. I can't even tell you. Uh, I haven't been in New York to see my family since probably like winter 2019. It's been way too oh long. My. Um, and I'm going, yeah. you know, the next week or so. So. I can't wait to get that. I can't, Wonderful. Casey. No offense, no offense to California people, but I'm trying to get a decent. I slide. hear you, but I'm from over here, Virginia. You know, DMV. Uh, we we uh, East Coast people. You know. You know, I'm trying to get so me a bagel and a here. slice of pizza. <laughs> oh my God, oh, New yeah. York's awesome. Look, so one wait. more thing, I wanted the one. I was wondering, are you going to give that little boy a sister or brother? Christina, you're putting Lawrence on uh, <laughs> blast right now. Oh, uh, man. We will. Yeah. Uh, who put you uh, up to this call? Who put you? Who from Lawrence's family put you up to this call? Did my mom tell yeah. you to call? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll, 
We'll see. We'll see. Right now, and I will say, right now with the pandemic and school and toddlers, like so much going on that we've been just kind of handling what's on our plate right now. But we'll we'll see. Well, listen, he is absolutely adorable, and thanks for putting the pictures up with him. Oh, thanks. You guys look so cute together, outdoors and on Instagram. I look at you guys. What a wonderful family, and God bless you. He's my guy. He's my guy. So, so Chris, yeah, it, enjoy him. Chris, your is it, this is your name's Christina. Is that what you said? No, Tina. Tina. Oh, just Tina. Is that yes. short for Christina? No, just Tina. Just Tina, and you're Tina from like Tina Marie. You're from West Virginia. DMV, no, no Virginia. The just DMV. Virginia. DMV. Delmarva. DMV, and that's um, DC, Maryland, Virginia. Yeah, that's oh. where Aaron D. Spears is from, I believe. I think. Well, listen, I wanted to tell you, have a wonderful holiday to both of you. you and too. you keep up the good work. Thank and you. And you got Will the be. best smile on TV. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, love you to you death. Made, you made our night. You're you're uh the, the caller of the of the show. Congrats. Oh, thank you. And love you guys. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Right, thank you. All right. Well, with Tina, I'm going to close see. the phone line. I think that's a great caller to end with. And uh, yeah. she she was she's interested in your family life there. Man, I got to get on the ball, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I can't end the show, Lawrence, without asking you to do the fan roll call. So yes. this is so Lawrence is a fan of the show, so he knows what to do. But you guys watching the show, this is your opportunity for Lawrence to say hello to you. So start typing your name. Don't type anything else. Just type your name. Like, you know, Mandy, Joe, Tina, whatever. Just type your name. And then Lawrence is going to say hi to all of you in the next 30 seconds. So start typing it. And uh, they're just catching up because uh, we're ahead of them on the comments. Bill, Bill's not sexy. He could turn on a light if he has one. Hmm, okay. All right. Well, Betty G. Hi, Betty G. Susan, Janice, Betty G. Zoe, Kathleen, what's up? Jakaris, what's going on? Cece, Avalon, Greg, Candace, what's going on? Poochie, Soap Goddess, Sam, Sonia, RW, Gracie, Jakaris again, Faduma, Mark, Darnell, Sherry, Zoe, Ariel, Chantel, Linda, uh, Tanya, Colby, David Hall, what's going on, man? Deloys, Kath. <laughs> Kath, Kathy Lee, Daniel, Chantel, April, Gracie, Pooh, Vanessa, Chantel, Taxi Joe, what it do? <laughs> Rodelli, Jeremy, Vicky Boyer, Daniel, Adam from Poland, man. I'm Poland. Joining us, Adam from Poland. Man. And, and Soap Buzz, Lisa three, from Soap Buzz. Three, two, one, roll call complete. We did it. Woo. Well, Lawrence, oh, wait, the only other question I have is because, you know, as we as we end the year, you know, we start a new year. Everyone make these New Year's resolutions. So mm -hmm. I'm sure you get asked this all the time. But do you have any fitness advice for our audience on how we can be our best selves in 22? <laughs> yes. Or how do I we have... get to look like you? That's mainly oh. I'm asking. I'm asking for a friend. How do we look like you? Uh I would give two pieces of advice. One for fitness is don't really just find something you love to do, but find something that's convenient for you. Something that you can do every day. It doesn't need to be a long thing, but something that you can do. If you're struggling to go to the gym, you may not go to the gym. You might just not make the drive, but if you like jump roping in your driveway, you can jump rope for like five minutes or less or whatever. So find something that's very convenient and then you know do it you don't got to do it a whole lot, just a little bit here and there. Same thing with food. If you guys want to change your diet, go for it, but substitute things. Don't just take things out. So if you have a sweet tooth, yes, you got the candy a little bit, add more fruit in. Like, like allow mm -hmm. yourself to slowly go down the journey. Because when you do these fast things and I'm going to change my diet, I'm going to work out every single day, it's like, it's not our, it's not how our mind works. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm all into slow progression. Yes. Well, that is true. I mean, the diet is the hardest part of it all. Um, it is. And so, but uh, but I'm 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 excited to let's stay fit and healthy and happy. And uh, maybe you can check back in with us 
more frequently. Yes, I'll be back it. on and I'm gonna check in and see how I, might, but I would love you to just pop in as surprise guests sometimes because uh, you're awesome to talk with. So I'm watching it anyway, Casey. Hey, you're watching it anyway, so <laughs> might as well be on it. Um might Lawrence, well. I want you to have a great weekend and get out of here and get home to your family and we'll see you next week. Yes, sir. Have a All great right. weekend. Man. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Peace. All right. How great is Lawrence, right? That was so much fun. I mean, he's, I mean, you're like, how much of you, well, I'm saying the personality wise, how much of you is like Carter? How much is, is, is Lawrence Carter? You know, that nice guy, always, always the coolest, coolest guy. And then he watches the show. That means a lot to me. And you don't think he's just saying that because I'm a producer. Do you? No, I don't think he's saying that just because I'm a producer. I think he really watches it. But even if he is just saying it because I'm a producer, it's a good move. It's a good move. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, so um, what happened this week at The Bold and the Beautiful? You know, we're kind of winding down. We're getting ready uh, to uh, go on hiatus for the holidays. So we're we're making episodes, turning them out one after another. And I don't know if you saw today's episode, but Taylor is back. And it just made me think about, like, something from – to share with you a little bit of production um, – uh, like, how do we make a decision to uh, publicize that a character is coming back? Or sometimes we just uh, have an, what we call an on-air reveal. So a lot of the times, say, when Sheila comes back, uh, you may remember it was in 2017. Um, it was top secret. And it was an on-air reveal that Sheila came back. And it was a big surprise and a shock and a big moment. Um, but like for, for today, when Taylor came back, we'd been teasing and promoting for quite a long time that, uh, we had a new actress playing the role of Taylor, uh, Krista Allen. And so that was, we also thought about that too. Is that an on-air reveal? Do we just have you say, you know, one day Taylor walks into Steffi's living room, but for this, we really wanted to make sure that, uh, people were aware and, uh, started talking about it because it's, it's like always like, a, something to to weigh a big decision, like what is going to be the most maximum uh, ratings wise? Like, will more people tune in if they know about it? Or is it fun for the audience to like be like, you never know what's going to happen. So that's a lot of decision goes on about that. So I'm like, I'm curious what you guys would have thought. Like, would you rather have just seen Taylor appear or were you kind of excited to know that today Taylor was going to be on? And so you saw the scenes with her and Steffi and at the very end, Ridge comes in. And well, that's your, you know, we'll see what, what, that's your Friday cliffhanger, right? You got to tune in on Monday to see where, where this is going. Um, but, uh, should be some fun, some fan, some fun stuff between Ridge and Brooke and Taylor and Deacon and, oh, you know, it's always something. It's always something. Um, Hey, I got some fan mail or a Christmas card from, uh, Angie Theo, the Theo sisters. So I just wanted to open up my Christmas card on air because I really want to say thank you to the Theo sisters for my uh, my Christmas card. And oh, it's got a lot of glitter. I just I just got gl I just glittered all over myself. Ooh, uh oh, oh wait, there's gift in here. Oh my goodness. Wait, here's my card. Isn't that nice? Prayer angels. Prayer angels. Oh, it's got a lot of glitter though. This is. Oh, wait a minute. Oh my gosh. You, okay. We think a lot alike. This is hilarious that you made this. There's a nice little message in here, which I'll read a little bit later. Thank you guys. But okay. You got to see what they did. Angie, I had the same, uh, I had the same and Maria, I had the same idea, but they took the Sheila photo and look at that. They put Santa hats on all of them. Is that not, isn't that cool? Oh my gosh. I love it. Cause you beat me to it though. You literally beat me to it. And you remind me, I need to make this cause I really wanted to send that out. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, make this and, uh, send this out to a lot of people. But look, even Hayes has the, has a Santa hat on. Isn't that cute? Beth. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys. And there was also an, a little present in there. Thank you, guys. You're That's really sweet of you. I really appreciate that. When are you coming back to L.A.? We should do lunch. 
But thank you for my Christmas card. Um, the glitter? I don't know. I got, I got lots of glitter all over me now. So I glittered on myself. Um, what's going on? All right. Well, there's still 140 of you um, out there. Um, I'm going to open the fan line, see if anybody's on the fan line. I don't know. Let's just see. I got one person. Hi, welcome to Bold Live. It's just Casey. Hello? Are you there? No. Hello? I thought I heard somebody, but maybe there's not. Okay, well, I was going to talk to them, but nobody was there. Um, Ridge is an arrogant, arrogant jerkwad. I mean, he wasn't very nice to Hope. That was a little bit not nice. Okay, let's see. Some Hi, welcome to Bold Live. Hey, Casey. Hey, Lawrence is gone, but it's just me. Do you have a question or a comment about the show? Yeah. You know, first of all, I, I, I'm sorry, Miss Lars. I just was calling. This is Mel from New York, New York City. Hey, Mel. Yes. Hi. You know, I just want to say that I love the show, and I think that you're doing a good job. And actually, I hit you up on um, on your Instagram not too long ago okay. because I just was just I just love what you do, and, and and I love when you bring the stars on. But I sort of became a fan of yours too, just because of your humor and. I know, just how like you make everything and nice and everything, and I just think you do a good job. You know. Oh so uh, well, I really appreciate that. that comment. You know, I this is like, I love the one thing I love more than anything at the Bold and Beautiful are the fans. I honestly, I seriously mean that, and um, I just love I love the Bold and Beautiful like all of you, and this is just a fun, creative way to kind of have an outlet and interact and meet people like you, Mel, and also like bring bring a little bit of the show a little behind the scenes, you know, bring a little bit more of you to the show. And so, you know, uh, it's good. I'm glad you appreciate it. And, um, I, I do. And let's I, I, do this. Yeah. And I love whenever, every time you bring up the, you know, the, um, the unbelievable, unbelievable Miss Susan Flannery, any scene with her, I just, oh, oh my God, we got that. I, just, so I love that. But, you know, yeah. Oh, I was gonna say, staying on topic with Taylor, I'm very happy because I love the character of Taylor. I, again, you know, not to be controversial, but when she sort of lost her way for those couple of years, it was like, okay, this is not to tell who I remember. Again, I wasn't watching since I'm a little kid, but mm. I just think that Taylor has such um, moral to her and such light to her. So when she was lost, it's just something, yeah, I'm just loving, I'm hoping, I, we don't know, but I'm hoping that maybe she's go back to the more, I don't know, more balanced and more like um, romantic and just all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm hoping that we get the, you know, right. the more empowered Taylor back. Well, yeah, I, I appreciate your comment and yeah, we will see. I mean, I know Taylor was always kind of the moral compass and then she just kind of, you know, she killed Darla. <laughs> yeah, I know, I guess. And then everything went haywire. Poor Darla. Yeah, she got her heart broken and then, you know, but I love, I love, I love the character Taylor, so I just love her, love her, love her, and um, and I'm really excited to see what happens. Is the last time we saw her, she was a little you know, and I got to tell you, I, I I love Hunter Tylo, and um, but you know, uh, Chris Allen is as amazing as uh, Taylor, and uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be good. I'm I'm excited. I love Taylor, so I'm just I love romance and all that. So I'm just excited to see. You know, Taylor, the character is always uh, is important to Bone and Beautiful, so I'm just happy she's back. Yeah, exactly. And I, yeah, I'm happy she's more in a happier place. I'm hoping. I mean, you if you, you, you there would be no hope in Steffi without Brooke and Taylor. So this is true. You know yeah. that it's it's so fun to have the generations. So uh, yeah, cool. All right, well, Mel, thank you for calling and watching, and uh, call in next week when we have Krista here. Oh, 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 yes, I will. Oh, my yes. gosh. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I'm going to call it next week. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I'm, I didn't make that announcement really clear. But yeah, Chris Allen will be here on December 17th. So uh, which will also be our last bold live of the year. So we're going to close it out with Chris. Uh, and uh, we'll take a break during the uh, the holidays. But then we'll be back in January. So but I'm very excited. All right, Mel. Well, you have a great weekend and we'll talk to you later. All right. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Well, I'll take one more call because I don't know, nine of you have called. So let's see who's here. Hi, welcome to Bold Live. This is Casey. Right during the, uh, 
Hi. Um, this is actually Ariel from Richmond, Virginia, calling again. Oh, you called back? Hey, yeah. How's it going? Great. I was still watching, and I was like, okay, well, I want to call and, like, I guess let you know, like, thank you for doing this. Like, I really enjoy watching these. I, I appreciate um, the feedback because I, I don't know if you do or, you know, but I, I, I'm glad you do. That uh, means a lot to me, and I, I really – and if you ever have suggestions about – how to make it better, different, what you'd like to see, I will do my best to um, to accommodate. I appreciate that. It's really cool getting to talk to everybody. And you're really cool, too. And you and my daughter actually share the same birthday. Oh, January 4th? Yep. Oh, yep. Capricorns. All right. How did you know it was yes. January 4th? Did I say that? Yep, you mentioned it earlier did when I? you guys were talking okay. about Gemini. Um, uh, and I've been to Richmond, by the way. Um, very, cool. very cool town. A lot of very historical town. Yes. Yes. We pride ourselves on that, I think. <laughs> yeah. But, but, um, but, uh, I love, I love the East coast. Have you been, yeah, are you from nice. Richmond your whole life? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't envy the winters though. No. no it's freezing right now at nighttime. It is freezing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how, and, oh, I wanted how you do it. Yes. Oh, and I wanted to say that um, I did appreciate knowing that Taylor was coming back. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of kind of get the buzz excited. going. And I mean, uh, um, yeah, you know, you, but you got what I was saying about like being an on air reveal or do we kind of tease what's coming up? Yeah. And I was watching when Sheila came back, you were talking about in 2017. Mm -hmm. I like that surprise because I was guessing who was coming back mm. versus I needed Taylor to come back. So I was like, yeah, right. me and my friend, she watches the bowl lives and stuff with me too. And we were both so excited that Taylor was coming back. So we were waiting, you know, setting our, um, well, and just, it was like so couch. many, so many, I mean, I may read the Twitter and I uh, read the comments. There's so many people wanted Steffi's mom, you know, where is Taylor? So it, um, it just seems like it was the right time. It was the right time. So it made sense because yeah. I feel like Ho uh, not Hope Brooke was starting to really be the only mom figure. I felt right. like Steffi actually had to talk to. And 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 the Taylor and Rich scenes are good, but I but I keep watching when you know Brooke learns that Taylor's back. It's good. It's good. Oh, I can't wait for next week. I'm yeah. so excited. Yeah, it'll be great. Her face. Well, thank <laughs> you so much for calling back, Ariel. Have a great weekend. You too. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Oh, that's a nice caller. All right. I'll take one more caller here. Hi. Hey, so Welcome to the after party. Hey, Casey. Uh, this is Susan from Las Vegas calling. Susan from Las and, Vegas. Uh, just want to know how you're doing. The Were you calling Casey last time at a, at, a, at a slot machine? No, no. No, that was somebody else from Las Vegas. Okay. It had to be, yeah, because I really haven't been to a casino lately. Oh. You know, oh. just waiting for all this to settle down, you know, the numbers of all these people yeah. that are sick. And, you know, they keep going up because we, it's it's a town where people come from everywhere. And it's like a revolving door, you know. So, I don't know. I don't know. So, how's things out in California? So, yeah, things out in California are... um the same, you know, yeah, it depends well, what well, part well. in California you're in. Um, there's different, uh, Los Angeles County, uh, you, you know, is different than Orange County, but, um, but we're doing okay. We're doing okay. And we're doing okay here at the Bold and Beautiful. That's the most important That's thing cool. that we keep making our show for you guys. But, um, oh, the, I, I love watching it. And, and this Friday show is just so much fun for everybody. It's really cool that you take the time to do that. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Suzanne. Um, and uh, All right. you have a great weekend. You too. Talk to you soon, Casey. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Well, I'm closing the After Party fan line. And uh, I'm going to gonna wrap up the show and say thank you all for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. I mean, we're up to over 226,000 subscribers. So, we, you know, we want to try to get to a million by the end of the year. So, um, <clears throat> Might be 
So please tell your friends. Like if you tell your friend and then that friend tells their friend and then that friend tells their friend, like we could get to a million, right? Could we? I need to start, I need to start pushing harder. Let's get to a million. We need a million subscribers because the more people subscribe, the more episodes we'll put up on YouTube faster. Like if you want to see every episode and we got to, if we got to a million subscribers, we'll put every episode of The Bold and the Beautiful on YouTube. I promise. That is the Casey promise. How, who doesn't want to see every episode? But it might take you like, I once did the math. If you watched every episode, um, you'd have to like watch it like 10 hours a day. Uh, I, you know, I'll do the math later, but it would take a long time to watch every episode. But how amazing would that be? I'll watch, you know, also something I want to do, and I don't know if I can pull this off, but I want to do like a marathon bold live to celebrate our 35th anniversary. I want to do like a 30, 35 hour bold live. And like, just have the talent keep coming in and I'll just do this for 35 hours. But I, I, I like step away kind of like the Jerry Lewis telephone. I'd step away and have like a co-host come in and they'd take over and then I'd come back. I don't know. Do you think this could last for 35 hours? That would be amazing. Okay, guys, we're going to wrap this up and I am, oh, so like, like Mel who called in, he follows me on my social media. Uh, at Casey Cass, and I'm also on Twitter at Casey Cass Music. Please connect with me there. Send me a message, follow me, like me, you know, tweet me, whatever you want to do. That's where you can get a hold of me. And um, be sure to watch The Bold and Beautiful on CBS or around the world, uh, the best show on television. And I'm going to say from all of us at The Bold and the Beautiful, continue to be bold, be beautiful. And be back here next week when we welcome Krista Allen, a.k.a. Taylor Hayes, Dr. Taylor Hayes. Excuse me. All right. We'll see you next week. Be safe, everyone. So that's it.